everyone, it's Trenna from John's Furniture Repair. I'm in the shop with a very cute little project. Um, it's from a YouTube viewer that lives here in Saskatoon, so that's pretty neat. She was so happy to find me here and I'm so happy to work for her on this cute little uh, trash can, which is, you know, not a nice thing to call things, but this is a really nice trash can. Take a look. We've got really beautiful tooled leather sides that are pressed in or with a spline on each side. They need a little bit of help. There's a little bit of joinery that needs some help, but it's nice oak, solid um, joinery, and it's looking looking a little rough, but it's kind of a really cool piece. So we're gonna get this thing apart. We're gonna be regluing some joints, fixing some damage, and giving this uh, leather a little bit of a cleanup and a, and a condition, and we'll give it back to her. So let's get to work. Okay, so first things first, let's get this apart. I believe that everything kind of comes off. This is in a, a kind of groove. So the miters are what hold everything together. So I'm just gonna, cause there's a lot of nails and stuff in everything. So I'm just gonna start popping things apart here with my mallet. It's got doweled miters, so yeah, you can see the dowel in there. All right, so I got that out of there. I'm not sure if it's a good idea to take them out or just leave them in. My dad says, leave them in. And I'm always like, let's take everything apart. But anyways, I can get this dust and dirt out of the frame now. There's a lot of stuff stuck in there as it was a trash can, so probably over the years. So this is really interesting. It's not leather. It's like an oil cloth-ish type of thing. So there's the back that is on the inside and it's nailed into the frame. And then on the front, they have a whole piece that goes into the groove. So that's kind of interesting, but it is quite dirty. So I really do want to get these out so I can get all of this dirt and grime out of everything because that will wear down uh, the material over the years. <sighs> it's important for it to be clean. And as well, you know, this groove here, all of the glue is let, let go and it needs to be cleaned up as well. So I might try to do that on each one. We're gonna to be touching up these loss areas and putting a protective coating over this um, so that it's nice and protected for years to come because it'll get used again. And as we're, where we can, we're gonna save the old spline because uh, it's all in good condition. So I'm just gonna keep the panels together. Other things that we're gonna do while it's apart, 
Um, the miters, as you saw before, are broken in a lot of places. So big chunks missing along that we're gonna be uh, splicing in some wood. Some areas aren't very much, so I'll just use putty there, but um, especially on the top and the bottom where it gets impacted, it needs to be a wood repair. So I'll get the other ones apart.
Okay, so this is my last one here. I've just been kind of working uh, on touching up this oilcloth type stuff. Um, and basically it's just like a muslin covered with paint and like stamped in, I think. That's my best guess. Somebody might know more about it than I do. Anyways, I'm just using um, lacquer, lacquer tints to color in the areas of loss and then also using a blend doll um, wax, which is, uh, you you can finish over these, so that's nice because we do need to seal everything in. And this color looks pretty good with the red that is missing. And then these are graining, uh, um, sorry, grain and crayons. I don't know what you call them. Anyways, and they're just a really color fast um, pencil crayon that you can draw in stuff like the grain in the leather looking stuff that we need to replace back in. And then also if that doesn't work in some areas, it's just too much loss. We use a little bit of a, uh, what color is this? Um, extra dark walnut, I think, with some black in here, just to get a little bit more. So this is my last one I've got. You can see all our repairs here. There are some areas I still need to fill and do some work in, but I'm gonna do that after it's all glued together. I just wanted to get these uh, preliminarily touched up because I can work on the backs a little easier this way before we put it together. So I'll just get this one finished up and then we'll glue this little can back together. Okay, everything's looking pretty good. Um, might be a few more touch-ups when we get it all glued together. But now we're just gonna get this box put back together. And I did um, number most of the sides here. So we'll just see if those are still there. Sometimes they disappear. Yeah, there's an X there. So these two will go together. And you just gotta, I've been checking as I'm cleaning everything up to make sure these little dowels here are not loose because you have to be tight on both sides so that we have a good joint. I think I did get them all. So we're just gonna use a carpenter's glue for this. You could use hide glue if you wanted. This is fine too. Both reversible. My only problem with hide glue is I never remember to turn on the glue pot. So other than that, it's great glue. So we're just gonna get not too much glue in everything, but enough to coat the whole dowel. And we'll do a little bead along the miter as well. I don't want a whole pile of squeeze out, but we'll get it coated. And then our little uh, bottom here, we glued back together because it was split. So we need to make sure we get that in too before we get the whole thing together. There, that should be sufficient. And it's nice that they're doweled because it always makes it for a much easier glue job with the miters. Okay, and so we'll get our, our drawer bottom in here as well at the same time. together really nicely so I'm just gonna put a couple clamps on it and there we go so we'll let that dry for a bit clean up some of that squeeze out and come back to it for some more cleanup after it's dry All right, so we've got this guy out of the clamps and you saw me putting a coat of shellac on the muslin cloth. I also did the inside. Um, I believe my customer is gonna be using this as a plant stand, which I think is a much more noble purpose for this beautiful box. 
So uh, I've got some putty here. Our miters came together really well, but uh, we have some chips and things along the sides um, where we didn't repair and blending in our repairs as well. You can see of a lot of little pieces of wood that we've stuck on there. And a few nail holes that were there from before when it was being held together with nails. So that's pretty dry right now. So I'm just gonna go, I don't wanna get rid of all the little dents and scratches on this whole thing, but um, gaps and big gouges and nail holes, yes. Okay, so the shellac has dried overnight, looking kind of shiny. So the last thing we're gonna do is just give it a rub down with the Howard's beeswax and polish, and then it'll be done. And there it is all finished up, looking really nice, put back together. All those miters are nice and tight. And we still got a really nice aged look to the piece that we didn't lose. And uh, did replace some of the color on the oil cloth and re-glue and repair the whole entire thing. Added some shellac and some beeswax. Did have to re-glue that little bottom plate there as well. And do a couple of touch-ups and things. We found a lot of dirt in this piece. Got it all cleaned up re-glued back together looking sharp very interesting little piece so thanks for joining me on this little restoration i hope you enjoyed it if you want to support this channel you can buy me a coffee the link is in the description below and as always thanks for being here have a great day cheers <laughs>